Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we come to lift your name up, God. We come to magnify you. We come to give you glory. Hallelujah. All over this building this morning, we come to raise up a standard this morning that, God, you chose us this morning, God. You breathed life into us this morning, Lord. You told us, oh, God, that if we would just humble ourselves, hallelujah, seek your face, amen, hallelujah, you're a good God, you're a gracious God. We love you, Lord. We lift your name up and magnify you, God, because there's not a God like you, oh, God. So, God, we humbly approach your throne of grace today. We come in the presence of the Lord, God, singing hallelujah. We come clapping and stomping our feet. We come giving you the high is praise, which is hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we are so grateful that you chose us this morning. And since we're in the land of the living, oh, God, we bless and honor you, God, for it. God, we just thank you, God. We thank you for reigning on us favor, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, God, for being God. And you don't need us, God, but yet you choose to allow us to come and go as we please day by day. You give us a thing called free will. But, God, we thank you, God, for your structure of your Holy Ghost, God, how you, how you allow your spirit to be poured upon each and every one of us, oh, God, that we can do the works. We are your handiworks, God, with your feet. With your hands, with your eyes, with your ears. Now, God, use us as you see fit in the service this morning, God, to bring down your Shekinah glory all over this place, God. Bring your Holy Spirit in this place, God. Fresh and anew, God. Saturate your atmosphere, God. We feel your presence. Oh, God, push it upon us in every corner. We thank you for the angels that you have dispatched to us this morning that are in each and every corner that is sitting in and between us, oh God. We thank you for so much, God. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for our husbands, our wives, our children, our jobs, the reports, the relationships, the commitments that you allow us to do. We bless you today and thank you. We honor you. We honor you, God. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah, because your joy has made our sorrows go away there was no more cloudy days no more rainy days no more blue and gray days God there are nothing but sunshine when we think of the name of Jesus oh God you're the king of king and you're the lord of lord you you you're such a merciful God a gracious God and the Bible declares that you're slow to anger slow to anger God we thank you God for just showing favor on us God come on in the service as we just we just uh, I we are uh, admiring the Lord this is adoration time you could come in if you're in the sanctuary you can come through this is not a prayer this is just we're just adoration of the Lord we just thank you God for being so gracious we just thank you for keeping us we thank you for God some some people God is pulled from the pits of hell they pulled from the graveyard and placed us back on it. Took us out of the miry clay, placed our feet on solid ground, and look at it. We're able to come in here and clap, stomp, hear, smell, taste, and touch, and participate. So God, now that we're here, we, we, we declare we will participate this morning. We will participate because we love you, Lord. Come on, let's give God a praise this morning. Let me hear some music of praise. Come on, let's hear some praises in the house. We love you, Lord. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, come on. Come on, talk to the king this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just think about a moment what you was going through. Hallelujah. And he brought you out of it. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Think about where you was maybe 10 years ago. Hallelujah. You're not there no more. Hallelujah. You've been so good to me. We serve a good father. A good, good father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Think of what the businesses he allow you to open up. Hallelujah. We only been, we've been adoring him for four minutes, y'all. We can give him a couple minutes of adoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for keeping me. For not allowing me to see death sooner than you wanted me to see it. Lord, I thank you for when I ate that food and I prayed over it in the name of Jesus. You kept me. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, God, when I was on the road and it was a drunk driver on the road and they swerved over to hit me, but God, you stopped me. You stopped it and you kept it. And they swerved. Hallelujah. All the God, you did that we're able to walk you by. It and you kept drive it. And by. Hallelujah. And being the that we're... God, we thank you for our cabinets being full. Hallelujah. We thank you for not being, no lack, no lack. Always providing, always healing, always delivering, always making a way, God. You made a way when it seemed to be no way. Come on in, mother. We just adorize. We adoring God for his works. Come on in. Hallelujah. Everything he's done and everything he's doing and everything he's about to do, God. We can lift our hands and we can say thank you. We can lift our hands and say thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord, and thank you. Lord, just thank the Lord for something he did for you. I want to thank you for all the times you reigned in my life. I want to thank you for your sovereignty. I want to thank you for your grace. I'm thanking you, Lord. I could have been sleeping in my grave but you kept me and you made a way for me because you're a way maker. You're a way maker. You're my provider. You're my provider. And you're my healer. And you're my healer. He's, he, has he been in, a delivered to anybody? You're my deliverer. You paved the way. You made the way. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. So open up. Open up. Pour down. Pour down. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Somebody say, I feel the rain. I feel him all over this place today. God, you are merciful and gracious, God. Yes, I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. We thank you, Lord. God, we just thank you for so much. I just wanted to lift the name of Jesus up this morning. We give honor to Jesus Christ, which is the head of our lives. We, we praise you and honor you. We thank you, God. We magnify you, Lord. We lift your name up high. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Because we love you, Lord. There's no one like you, God. We can search high and search low, but we still won't find a God like you, King Jesus. Nobody will be able to come and comfort and hold us. He said, when your mother and your father leave you, he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will be right there to the end of it. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Father God, we just want to bless your holy and righteous name, God. We just want to thank you for everything that you're doing and what you're about to do, God. We ask you to come in and fresh, a fresh fire, fresh anointing, God upon the speaker this morning, God. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, God. Endow her with the presence of your Holy Ghost, God. Let the words that come from her mouth, oh God, rain down right from the throne of grace, God. Let it engulf somebody that's going through. Let it encourage. Let it rebuke those that don't know what they're doing. And God, let it instruct those that need to be told how to do it. God, we bless and honor you for our life, God. We pray that you have your way in our life and it be all in your name. Father God, we just want to thank you for the bishop here. We honor and magnify him and his wife. Oh God, Bishop John Briscoe, we just pray right now that you continue to 
to set him up as you see fit, O oh God, in the presence of his enemy, O oh God. We, we thank you, God. Whatever you're doing in him, O oh God, let it be the speedy work of the Lord, God. Let it take place as you see fit according to your glory and your honor and your praise, God. Let him be an example to those that are following. God, we bless and honor his wife as well, God. We thank you for healing in the body. We know she healed. And we bless and honor it for it. God, we bless the ministerial staff. We just give honor to each and every member of those that have shown up to come in the house of God to do the work of the Lord, the deacons and their wives. All have been called to service in your word, God. We ask that you strengthen them, you heal their bodies. For those that are not healed, God, send us a fresh healing to them, oh God. And God, send a fresh conviction as well, God, that God, your house is where the healing is. Your house is where deliverance is. Your house is where you get made whole. Your house is where the problems and issues will leave in the name of Jesus. Well, I just want to honor my wife, Minister Latasha. Give honor and glory to my beautiful wife. I thank God for her. I honor her also as well. And for the team today, God, help us, God. Let the keyboard, let the drums, let the voices of the praise team come let them come swift. Let them, let them bring the Shekinah glory down, God. We beseech you, God, in all these manners, the whole house of faith. We pray that you get what you came here to get today. We honor you as well. We bless and magnify you in the Jesus' name we pray. Turn to the scripture real quick. I want to go to Jeremiah 19. And please don't get upset with me because this is the word. This is God's word. All right. First, first thing I turned to was Jeremiah 19. Verse 15. When you have it, say amen. 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 And the Bible reads, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, pay attention. I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. And the word is blessed. Amen. At this time, I would like to call forth the praise team. JWM, Judah Worship Ministry to bring forth the praises of the Lord. And the next voice you will hear will be of our own evangelist Wanda Briscoe. In Jesus' name, may you send a fresh fire upon her. May your words be edified in the presence. And may you receive a blessing. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. 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 Do me a favor, sir. Put down that chair for me, please. Bring that chair toward the set up so we can hear ourselves. Thank you. We just can't hear ourselves. Hallelujah. Come on, how many people know that you, your hallelujah don't belong to you this morning? You came in this building and you didn't come here on your own. You was drawn by the Spirit. So he deserves our hallelujah. It belongs to him. We just thank the Lord for so many things that he's doing. Come on, let's put, put our hands to the heavens and let him know it.
Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we deserve it? This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, not this day.
mother, not your father, not your sister, not your brother, but just give me you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to first give thanks and honor to Bishop Briscoe and First Lady Briscoe for this opportunity. Thankful to the whole household of faith, to Elder Russell Slade and to Minister Latasha Slade. Thank you, Lord. Thank you to the officials and thank you for everyone that's being here on today. Thankful for those that are watching via social media. I'm thankful to be back in the service and to be back in the U.S. from my trip to Paris, France, which was amazing, and it was definitely life-changing. I won't be before you long. I have a brief word from the Lord, and um, if you could turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. When you have it, say amen. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry, 
and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? I have seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded, there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are the gifts from God. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. I'm going to focus, you may be seated. I'm going to focus on several of the verses that I read, and I want to speak to you from the topic, Obey Your Season. First, let's start with the four-letter word that many of us don't like, and that's the word obey. Several meanings of this word are commands, guidance, to comply. These meanings are tight, but they are right. We are now in what is considered the fall season. The leaves have turned to pretty orange-brown colors. The weather has gotten cooler on some days. Some have even turned their heat on in the morning. Football games and pumpkin spice for those that like pumpkin, not me. The fall season has a dedicated date on the calendar that it comes every year. And we also have seasons that we go through spiritually. In verse 1, the Bible lets us know that there is a time for every purpose under heaven that within itself lets us know that there are some things that we are going to have to go through and that it has a purpose. Verse 2 says, a time to be born and a time to die. The book of Ecclesiastics was written by King Solomon, and what Solomon had observed and wanted us to know is that life consists of a series of beginnings and endings and God is the ultimate authority over everything. Everything between the time of our birth and our death happens at an appointed time. So what you do in between the dash matters. Job chapter 14 verse 5 in the New Living Translation says, You have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live and we are not given a minute longer. We know that childbirth is a joyous occasion, but yet on the other hand, death is a sad time. But yet is, it is still a season in our lives, so you have to obey your season. Verse 2, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. For those that are familiar with gardening, farmers have a season in which to plant different vegetables and fruits. For example... If you like peas, you plant them mid-March through April, and you plant the seeds directly in the ground. But harvest time, or to pluck them up, is in May through mid-July. As you look around, you know that there is an abundance of pumpkins. The planting season for pumpkins is mid-May through mid-June, and the plucking up season is September through November, which is why we see pumpkins all around. Verse 3, a time to kill and a time to heal. I would like for you to look at this verse in the spirit realm. Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, and I like the easy translation, and it says, We belong to Christ. 
as a result, we no longer obey our wrong human thoughts. We stop doing the bad things that our thoughts want us to do. It is like we have killed those thoughts on the cross. From this, we can learn that there are things that we need to kill within us. Some of those things can be pride, unforgiveness, strife, envy, gossiping, lying, and so forth. Believers are to take their old sin nature and nail it to the cross. We crucify the flesh through repentance of sin by turning our backs on the old way of life by saying no to selfish and sinful ways. As we daily put to death the sinful nature, we begin to walk in victory over the flesh. The word for to heal in the, reg in the original Hebrew means to provide a cure for to make healthy again, whether physically or spiritually, to repair or rebuild. Sometimes the physical healing has to occur and that means with certain bacteria or organism must be killed before the human body can be restored to health. Likewise, spiritual healing often follows a season of brokenness. Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. Another season of healing is found in Psalm 147, verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. When we cooperate with God, trusting that even the most painful and challenging seasons serve purpose in his plan, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 gives us the assurance that he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also in verse 3, it says, a time to tear down and a time to build up. In a spiritual sense, we will experience seasons of breaking down the old way of life and building up the new. Christians are to put to death or destroy the flesh of their earthly nature. We must do away and tear down our old way of life and put on a new life, and the Holy Spirit will help you do that. Those who are lifted up with pride are destined to endure seasons of breaking down. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 in the message version says, and it breaks it down as plain as day. And it's to the point. And it says, first pride, then the crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. Being torn down and destroyed is the destiny of the ungodly. But building up is the ministry of the body of Christ. The words we speak ought to be wholesome, and they should not tear down another person. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it says, in the New Living Translation, doesn't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. There are seasons when God must break up the follow ground of sin in the believer's heart. And in Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, in the easy version says, Be like a farmer who plants good seeds. Plant things that are good and right. Then your harvest will be faithful. Plow the hard ground and prepare it for the Lord to bless you. It is time for you to turn back to the Lord. Then he will bless you with good things like rain that falls on the ground. Just as there is a season for every matter under heaven, there is a time to break down and a time to build up. In times when you feel that everything is falling apart, remember and trust that God is rebuilding your life on the firm, unshakable, and everlasting foundation of Jesus Christ. Verse 4. A time to cry and a time to laugh. We've all cried over something in our lives. Whether you are a man or a woman, and for the men, never let anyone tell you that if a man cries that he is weak. That is a lie. 
Some people refer to crying as cleansing of the soul. Some people cry at weddings. You cry at the accomplishments of your children. You cry at the accomplishments of your spouse. You even a cry at the accomplishments of yourself. And some of us, like me, even cry when you're watching a Hallmark movie. In Romans chapter 12, verse 15, the New Living Translation says, Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. When we identify with one another in our joys and sorrows, weeping and laughing together at the appropriate times, we prove the authenticity, authenticity of our heartfelt affection and love for each other. Instead of distancing ourselves from the emotional experience of others, genuine love motivates us to weep freely, to laugh out loud, to sing and dance, and to feel solidarity with those who we care about, regardless of their mood. You can laugh when you watch a funny TV show like Martin or cartoons. You laugh at family gatherings. You laugh at karaoke. All of these things will produce laughter in your life. So obey your season. In verse 4, also it says, a time to grieve and a time to dance. Solomon focuses on the emotional seasons of human existence, pairing a time to mourn and a time to dance with, a time to weep and a time to laugh. In the original Hebrew, the word translated as mourn means to observe the customs of mourning after the death of a person. Mourning is the natural process of working through the heartache that follows a significant loss. It is normal and healthy to grieve for a period of time after a loved one has died. Ultimately, God uses mourning to produce healing. Seasons of mourning serve a good purpose. They remind us of the need to put our faith and hope in God. For Psalms 39, chapters four th verses 4 through 7 says, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you at best, each of us but a breath. While seasons of mourning are painful, they provide opportunities for us to see the weight of our sin and the death of our spiritual bankruptcy. In Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There is a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time for sorrow and for celebration, for repentance and for refreshing in the kingdom of God. Those who mourn are blessed because they are destined to dance and celebrate like they did at the Supper of the Lamb. And that's found in Revelations chapter 19, verses 7 through 10. They have had their hearts broken by their own sin in the depths of their word suffering. Yet they will receive God's comfort and live with joy forever in the Lord's presence. Verse 6. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to search and a time to give up reminds us that some things in life w are within our control while others are not. We may work hard scraping and saving to buy a home only to lose it when the housing market crashes. We may wait years to find the love of our life and then lose that person in a tragic accident. After Job had lost everything, he still trusted God. Job said in chapter 13, verse 15, Though he slay me, yet will I put my hope in him. As an old man, Joseph looked back on all the losses and saw that no, not one of them, including the evil done to him, had prevented God's purpose from being accomplished. While others had meant to harm Joseph, God had used every season of loss to fulfill his good plan. And that's found in Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. 
As I look back over my breast cancer journey, I've had to obey the seasons of many of these verses. Mark Twain has a quote that says, the two most important days are the day that you are born and the day that you find out why. I was born in a natural to Bishop and First Lady Briscoe on March the 13th, 1968. But on January 19th, 2011, I found out my why. For this is the day that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. A rebirth in the spirit had to take place because I had strayed away from God. And I had made people and things an idol God. So these things had to die. I had some cancer cells that had invaded my body and they had to die. I had bitterness and it had to die. I had a form of godliness and it had to die. I know that I'm not by myself, so either say amen or ouch. Amen. As part of this dying process, God gave me my favorite scripture, which is Isaiah 66 and 9. And the New Century Version says, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, saith the Lord. We are all going to have a season where some relationships, friendships will all have to die. Some of these things will die because as God elevates you, everyone can't go with you to the next level. I had to obey the season of tearing down and building up. God had to tear down some things in me that was not of him in my life. God had to build in me character, obedience, a prayer life, a fasting life, and ministry. God had to build up my self-esteem because of the multiple breast surgeries, hair loss, darkness of my chest from radiation, and I had felt that my body had betrayed me due to no fault of my own. Even in the building process, God does a heart check. How many of you had had to go through a season where God has had to go in and do a heart purge? I'm sure that you can say that it was an unpleasant and an uncomfortable time in your life, but you had to obey your season. Going through breast cancer was one of the hardest things that I had to do in my life. If any of you have seen the movie Green Mile, you know at the end they, he has this long road that he has to walk through at the end. And so when I would go into the cancer center, you have to check in, and then they tell you to go to the back to change your clothes. And it seemed like the walk from after you change your clothes to get on the radiation table was reminded me of the Green Mile. And I used to joke to the radiation people there that, man, this seems like in the movie, the Green Mile. And they, we would all laugh, and even at that time, they, at that, it, they would have an iPod. So that lets you know how far back that was. They don't even do iPods anymore. And they would have different music. We would listen to country music and all different types of music. And that was to take your mind off of what you're going through. The bishop couldn't take that long road from me. First lady couldn't take that long road from me. My children couldn't take that long road from me. But I had to obey the season that I was in. Each time I would get on that table... 33 times, I would pray, Lord, help me get through this. I couldn't give that cup to anybody else. It was just me and God. There was a time when I had gotten an infection, and my mom had came to Atlanta and stayed with me a couple of weeks. And when I would go for the tr get the help for the, um, the infection, there was no anesthesia. My mom would sit in a table in a chair in the corner. The lady would come in, remove the cotton out of my breast, nothing to numb it. And I had to go through that. I had to obey the season of pain. That's why Isaiah 66 and 9 is my favorite scripture. I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born. And I would lay on, in that pain, and I'm like, what can be born out of this pain? God, what are you doing? No anesthesia, no pain medicine, nothing to numb it. And I would see my mom turn her face to the wall. But I had to lay on that table and endure that pain. And going through the cancer, 
I didn't see people that looked like me, but yet statistics say one in eight will get breast cancer. White women are diagnosed more from breast cancer, but black women die more from it. So I said, how come I don't see us? How come we're not in here? So my silent prayer was, God, let me be the face of breast cancer. I didn't know that that silent prayer would take me all the way 11 years later to Paris, France, to speak on breast cancer made me a warrior. So I'm thankful that I obeyed the season that God had me in. So what is the season that you're in and what will you learn from it? I know that so many of us don't like the word obey or obedience, but obedience is necessary to reap the reward that God has for you. You have to pass the text, the test. <coughs> Excuse me. For in the text, it further says, God has made everything beautiful in its own time. Not in our time, but in God's time. Going through a season of crying for years for something to come to pass can be hard, but look at Hannah. She went years and years of crying before God because she was barren and wanted a child, but then God granted her prayers. You have to obey your season, for God is pruning you and building character in you. Sometimes you will be mocked during your seasons. You will endure gossip. You will endure being lied on, but you have to obey your season, for God uses everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I love how Solomon wrote in verse 12, and I'll read it from the New Living Tr Version. So I concluded, there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. So what is he telling us? Why gripe and complain about what you're going through? All of us are going to have some days or even years where it will seem that we are in a valley or a pit. Look at Joseph. He spent years in the pit, but he obeyed his seasons and he endured. He didn't give up. He didn't complain. He didn't try to pass his season on to someone else. He didn't have a woe is me attitude. He didn't stop praising God. He didn't stop praying. And at the end, he ended up in the palace. When it's wintertime here in Maryland, and if there is four feet of snow on the ground, no one is outside with the lawnmower trying to cut the grass. I know that it might sound ridiculous, but you have to obey the winter season. But just as ridiculous as that sounds, are you telling God that you can't go through your pit season, but yet you want to get to the palace? Are you telling God that you want the harvest, but yet you don't want to plant anything? I couldn't pass the cup to anyone else as I went through my breast cancer journey. I had to obey my season. Breast cancer instilled in me a fight that I didn't know that I had. Breast cancer was not a death sentence, but it was a life sentence, for it forced me to live. Breast cancer brought me back to God. The very thing that brought me back to God, like I said before, is what God used to take me to Paris, France, and to speak on a platform that where now I'm connected to people from India, Australia, Kenya, South Africa, Brussels, and I now have now been invited to Africa to speak. I'm praying on that one. The very thing that I despise that left darkness on my chest is what God has used for me to educate people on because 11 years later, I still have the radiation glow. After three surgeries, my scars keloid, and every morning when I wake up, I place my right hand over my left breast and I say, thank you, Lord. The keloid is a reminder, or some may say a thorn in my side, that I had to go through a season that was life-threatening in the natural sense, but it was a spiritual awakening for me. As National Breast Cancer Month comes to an end, it doesn't stop for women like me. We think about breast cancer and the effect that it has had not only on us, but for the women that have lost their lives to it. 
There are over 4 million breast cancer survivors in the world, and I am thankful to be one of them. Hallelujah. I've endured so many of the seasons mentioned in Ecclesiastes 3, and because I obeyed the season of breast cancer, I can live in real time, chapter 13, um, excuse me, verse 13, which says, and people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are the gifts from God. God has given us the gift of seasons, and it is up to you to obey them. I admonish you to obey your seasons so that you can reap the rewards and gifts that God has for you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to turn it over to Elder. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Obey your seasons.